to listen to how disgusting the progressive left has become. The worse the tragedy, more disgusting they are. Here's this Van Jones. He's a communist. Conservative. Oh, I like Van Jones. I don't like him in the least. Here he was on CNN last night. Cut five. Go. Let me try to lay out for you know what I think the concern is with the idea that we be adding guns to that environment. You know, Ken, you're pointing out the positives. The positive are maybe somebody would use that gun well sure. and stop a, 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 an intruder. There are some real negatives as well. You know, African American and Latino kids already get treated fairly badly in schools as it is. They're more likely to be seen as a threat. They're more likely to be expelled, more likely to be suspended for the exact same behavior. Videotaped the exact same behavior. All right, so stop. So why don't we break up? This is what I don't understand. These edifices are created by the left, and they're controlled by the left. The NEA and the AFT controls our school systems. The left controls almost every school system in the country. The curriculum, the assemblies, the holidays, the food, the school lunch program, from the administration on down. There are exceptions. I got it. Don't call me and tell me your exception. I believe you. There are. But the vast majority of them, the rule is the rule. So now these, these edifices that have been created by the left, these government schools, we're told, are absolutely systemically racist against blacks and Latinos. And yet with Landmark Legal Foundation, where I used to be president, now I'm just chairman, but when we used to go into court and fight in state courts and federal courts for school choice, so kids, poor kids, mostly poor black kids and Hispanic kids, could go to their neighborhood schools or a different school. We were fought by the NEA, the AFT. We were fought by the ACLU, by the NAACP, and the rest of them. So this is where the left gets away with it, and I'm sick and tired of it. So our schools are racist. Blacks and Hispanics are expelled and suspended for the exact same behavior where whites aren't. Yeah, right. I don't believe it for a second, but that's the mentality. And if it's true then we have a failed public education system as far as the left's concerned. But try and cut one penny. See, I pick up all this stuff because I, I understand what the left is. Go ahead. It is a threat. This kid is a class clown if they're, if they're white. And so there is a concern that I think parents have, and you've heard now African-American educators coming out saying, if you start just passing out guns in schools as they are, given... All right, well, 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 who taught... The intellectual poison and dishonesty of this man is just putrid. But then again, that's why he's at CNN. Did somebody talk about passing out guns as schools, as they are? Has anybody said that? No. Go ahead. It's there. You might wind up having, you know, uh, those guns used against students in ways that are not good. Oh, in other words, you might shoot people because of their race. What did I tell you? They attack the cops. They want soft on crime judges. They want to disarm you. You have no protection. None whatsoever. And it is the lunatic, radical left, like this guy, Van Jones, but he's not alone. There's many, of all races. But we'll get more and more of our kids, more and more people injured, killed because of their ideas, in my humble opinion. Now, I can assure you, he doesn't insist that CNN remove all security from its building because the security guards or the armed guards or whatever they have there might shoot black or Hispanics more than whites. We also happen to know, as a matter of statistical, unequivocal fact, that more blacks die at the hands of blacks. It's not even close. Than any other race. We're not going to have a town. We're not going to have a town hall meeting at that. Certainly not at CNN. The NEA and the AFT. You know the biggest local school district in Virginia, right next to where I am, Fairfax County. One of the brave school board members said, "Let's have a discussion about, you know, armed, properly trained professionals in our school." They booed her down. They voted her down. They wouldn't even allow for a discussion. Then they put out a resolution for gun control. Good luck, Fairfax County. Good luck. You're going to need it. I'll be right back.
establishment's worst nightmare. Mark Levin. Call in now. 877-381-3811. Let me ask you a question. If somebody suffers from depression, are they allowed to defend themselves? If somebody has recently seen a psychiatrist, for whatever the reason, they're not considered criminally dangerous, but they've seen a psychiatrist. Are they permitted to have a gun? And what exactly is this new vetting going to look like? Psychiatrists, psychologists, other medical professionals, are they going to have to submit documents or something? What are they going to have to do? How is this going to work exactly? I need to know. And what about people who already have weapons? What if they've had bouts of depression? They lost somebody in their family. They lost their job. They had a tough three or four months. They were getting help, having medicine. But they're okay. They're on the mend. What about them? What do they count as? You know, people throw these phrases around. and We need to make sure people who are mentally ill can't have what. Well, what does that mean? What exactly does that mean? And if somebody thinks they have a mental issue, a chemical imbalance, they're depressed or whatever, but they, they have weapons, they like to hunt, they want to protect their family, whatever the reason. What's the likelihood they're going to get help? You know, we never talk about unintended consequences because all we see on TV right now is clapping seals, even among our own ranks, that something has to be done. The fact that the people who fail to act aren't held to account The fact that that's not the issue that's focusing the nation, but an abstraction, a complete and utter abstraction is focusing the nation. There are real consequences and real unintended consequences. Now let's talk about this age thing, 18 to 21. You shouldn't be able to get a rifle, any rifle. What if I like to hunt with my father? Can I use his rifle when we hunt? Or am I not allowed to do that? I don't know. Am I allowed to even target practice with a rifle? Can I use somebody else's? Is that allowed? Or I just can't buy one on my own? I can't buy a rifle. But I can buy a pistol? More people are killed in this country three times as many by pistols as by rifles and shotguns. So I can buy a pistol. That's okay. Well, now we've got to control the magazines, the number of bullets. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Fine. You don't need 30 bullets in a magazine. Well, I might need 30 bullets in a magazine if I want to carry one weapon with me and go hunting. And I don't want to carry another magazine with me. Maybe I do want 30 bullets in my magazine. Or... If I'm doing target practice, maybe I want 30 bullets in my magazine. Or, if I want it in my house to protect my family against somebody who may have purchased a a weapon in the black market, a quote-unquote semi-automatic, yes, I want 30 rounds in my magazine. There's a lot of reasons to have 30 rounds in a magazine. So let's say they outlaw that. Only seven. Only ten. Whatever. We'll pretend we're New Jersey, New York. Okay. Now I'm 18. I can't buy a rifle. I can buy a pistol. But let's say only seven rounds. Okay. Then I'll buy five pistols. Now I have 35 rounds. I pick up one pistol, finish it, pick up another pistol, finish it, pick up another. No. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, we have to limit the number of pistols you can have. Or maybe, given your, your youth, maybe you shouldn't be able to buy pistols either. You get my point? This solves nothing. And it's not intended to solve anything. It's like Obamacare. It's like everything else the left does. A foot is in the door, and the door is open. Your rights are not sacrosanct anymore. 
Matter of fact, you and I, those of you who agree with me, we're on defense all the time. We're on defense having to defend our unalienable rights. We're on defense having to defend our Bill of Rights, which is intended to protect the individual. You and I, we defend all the Bill of Rights. The progressives, they choose what they want to defend and then attack what they don't want to defend. I have the lowest of regard, utter contempt for these Republican politicians who buckle. Some things are more important than their re-election. Certainly more important to me. We had men who put their... <laughs> one moment. We had men who put their lives on the line to give us our Constitution, to give us our Bill of Rights. Many of these men, teenagers, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, who put their lives on their line to give us this country. To give us this country. Equal justice for all. Don't we hear this all the time? Right, Van Jones? Equal justice for every, except if you're 18, 19, or 20. We are going to determine, without any evidence whatsoever, that you are incapable of properly purchasing, handling, training with, properly using a rifle. Based on what? Because we just decided, based on that. And that, you see, ladies and gentlemen, will solve everything. Then they said, no, it's not going to solve everything, but it's a start. Oh, it's a start. Well, where does it end? They keep talking about Australia. Australia's great. Australia confiscated the guns from its citizens, essentially. They don't have a Second Amendment. We do, thank God. We do. 